federal grant from the United States Olympic Foundation has been produced and endorsed by the United States Amateur Confederation of Roller Skating. It is offered as an educational tool for the development of active or hopeful participants in amateur roller skating competition and persons who are or may wish to become, wish to become coaches and or judges of amateur artistic roller skating competition. The techniques and the disciplines of artistic roller skating that it illustrates are recognized by the United States Amateur Confederation of Roller Skating as official standards for which successful competitors are expected to strive towards which competent coaches are expected to teach and by which commissioned judges are expected to score. Viewers are encouraged to utilize all the technology available, technology available on video playback units, such as still frame, variable play speed, and instant review to individualize as much as possible the presentational pace of the instructions and illustrations. A printed guide has been created to supplement this video production and should be attached to the cassette case. The subject of this program is American Dance. The demonstration skaters are Debbie and John Labriola from Fountain Valley Skating Center in Fountain, Center in Fountain Valley, California. Your coach and commentator is Bob Labriola, also from Fountain Valley. American Dance is a discipline of roller skating which involves two people skating together, doing prescribed steps. American dance is a discipline of roller skating which develops and defines the fundamentals of correct skating. In American dance, the measure of excellence is shared by the, shared by the harmonious performance of skating movements by the partners and the accuracy of executing the prescribed requirement of each movement and dance. In a nutshell, the team that skates together and executes the more precise movements is the better team. We should all understand that roller skating is not an exact science and is subjective by nature. The purpose of this tape, of this tape is to reduce the subjectivity to the barest minimum. What is stated in this tape and what is shown on this tape is the official USACR's position on American dance. By definition, planing is a system of body inclination employing horizontal and parallel alignment of the head, shoulders, and hips. By definition, a posture baseline is an imaginary line from the center of the skating foot through the hip line and shoulder line. When skating American dance, it is absolutely mandatory that your body be perpendicular to your tracing, except during the execution of one foot and two foot turns. This perpendicular relationship is commonly referred to as being square to your tracing. Debbie will now demonstrate the correct method to be used when skating outside forward edges. Notice how her head, shoulder, and hips follow the arc created by her skate. By virtue of this correct alignment of her body, she is always square to her tracing. Debbie will now demonstrate outside forward edges done incorrectly. Notice how she is twisting the upper part of her body, her body to create the edge. Any twisting of the body in this manner is absolutely incorrect, a blatant violation of being square to your tracing. During the execution of inside forward edges, the same regulations apply. Your hips, shoulders, and head must follow the arc being created by your skate. As with the, as with the outer forward edges, her body should always be square to her tracing.
Debbie will now demonstrate the incorrect way to do inside edges. Once again, notice how she is twisting her hips and shoulders to create the inside edge. Inside edges done this way are particularly, particularly evident in the collegiate and must be severely penalized. As was previously mentioned, a posture baseline is an imaginary line from the center of the skating foot through the hip line and shoulder line. Now this posture baseline can be viewed from two directions. First, when viewing a skater or team from the front, from the front or back, and then while viewing the same skater or team from the side. While John is skating, notice how his entire body is leaning to both sides as one unit. To evidence this posture baseline, we will now freeze the frame and superimpose a real posture baseline over John's body. Notice how this straight line through his, through his body runs through his shoulder line, hip line, and skating foot. The same true lean can be viewed from the rear. Now, notice how John's body is leaning left and right, not as one unit. Particularly notice, particularly notice how his hip is sticking out. When we superimpose a posture baseline, it certainly does not go from the center of the skate through the hip line and shoulder line. This is a most serious error and must be punished accordingly. The same errors are very evident while viewing John from the rear, and the same lack of a posture baseline is clearly visible. As previously stated, this posture baseline exists when viewing a skater or team from the side as well. By freeze framing and drawing a straight line through her body, it is clearly seen that her torso is directly over her hips and her hips are directly over her skates. In essence, her body is over her skate. Notice how exaggeratedly arched her back is. If we were to draw a line through her body, it certainly would not indicate the correct posture baseline that must be used in American dance. The same error is being demonstrated, but on the other end of the spectrum. Debbie is leaning so far forward that her body is not over her skate. This is a very serious error and must be punished severely by all judges. By definition, a takeoff is the beginning of a new edge or flat from another edge or flat. There are two types of takeoffs, parallel takeoffs and, takeoffs and angular takeoffs. A parallel takeoff is one in which both feet are directly alongside each other and on the same arc at the instant of weight transfer. Parallel takeoffs are used when going first from one outside edge to another outside edge. Secondly, from an, from an outside edge to an inside edge, or from an inside edge to an outside edge. Parallel takeoffs are also used when going from one flat to another flat. An angular takeoff is one in which the skate, skate to be employed takes the floor on an arc or flat divergent 
to the arc or flat being skated. Angular takeoffs are used when going from one inside edge to another inside edge. Or secondly, from an outside edge to another outside edge that is crossed behind or crossed in front. These are referred to as cross rolls. The parallel and position is a position immediately alongside and parallel to the tracing skate. The angular and position is a position immediately alongside and angular to the tracing skate. Every step, except those that are one crossed in front, two crossed in back, three in line, and four, those that make up the second half of an open two foot turn must take the floor in either the parallel and position or the angular and position. Failure to do so is a severe error in American dance and must be severely penalized by the judges. Cross, step, cross steps must take the floor with the heel wheels of one skate at least alongside the toe wheels of the other skate. The tracings of the two skates must overlap. The tighter of the cross, meaning the closer the skates are to each other, the better the movement. By definition, definition, a step is the transference of body weight from one foot to the other. There are two types of steps, progressive steps and chasse steps. A progressive is a step that passes the old tracing foot. The most important element involved here is the passing of the old tracing foot. Progressive runs are a series of one beat progressive steps. The elements concerned are the passing of the old tracing foot by each step and the fact that each step must take the floor in the parallel and position. Some of the more common errors in progressive runs are crossing the second run. Notice how the second step of the sequence crosses the first step. Therefore, the second step does not take the floor in the parallel and position, which is an error in American dance skating. Another common error is the angular takeoff take on the third run. Once again, notice how the third step of the sequence is an angular takeoff and not a parallel takeoff. This third step fails to step in the parallel and position. Another serious error is walking and not using the end position for each step. Now notice how every step fails to take the floor in the parallel and position, but instead steps ahead. This is very incorrect. When your free foot is in a leading position, and the next step is required to take the floor in the and position, it is perfectly correct for the free foot to be brought back past the and position in the air before stepping into the and position. Now, this situation exists after cross chasses and also after an out of forward swing. Now notice how her left foot comes back past her right foot in both of these instances. It is, it is equally correct 
in both of these instances for the free foot to be brought back to the end position before the next step. A chasse is a step that does not pass the old tracing foot, a step the completion of which does not involve or permit a trailing position of the foot which becomes comes unemployed. The essence of a chasse step is that the new step does not pass the old step. There are five types of chasse steps, raised chasses, crossed chasses, dropped chasses, swing dropped chasses, and inline chasses. The first chasse that we will demonstrate is a raised chasse. Now a raised a raised chasse is a chasse during the execution of which the new free foot is raised vertically from the floor. There are three parts to this chasse, the placing alongside of one foot, the raising straight up of the other foot, and then this placing straight down of the third step. A cross chasse is a chasse for the execution of which the new tracing foot crosses the old. Now notice how that it is crossed so that the wheels are at least in line with one another. During this movement, she retains a constant arc. A dropped chasse is a chasse during the execution of which the new free foot is moved against against or into the line of travel. Notice how her free foot is placed alongside her tracing foot and the arc during all these steps remains constant. A swing drop chasse is a drop chasse where the free foot moves past the employed foot to the leading position before becoming the employed foot at the, at the end position. Once again, notice how a constant arc is retained during all these steps. An inline chasse is a chasse for the execution of which the new tracing foot takes the surface in line with the old. A stroke, by definition, is a step executed so as to impart momentum, which is synonymous with saying a step executed so as to give thrust or power. Therefore, no chasse steps are strokes, and some, but not all, progressive steps are, stro are strokes. A dance bass line is a real or imaginary reference line around which the lobes of a dance are built. It separates the barrier lobes from the center lobes. Every rock over in a dance must occur on the bass line. Adherence to the bass line must be absolute. There is no allowable deviation from it. The team that misses the baseline by even a small amount is in error. However, they are better than a team that misses it by a greater amount. Axis. In skate dancing, the axis of a dance is the angle created by the intersection of a lobe and a dance baseline. The axis of all dances used in the used in the competitive program is 45 degrees except the Fascination Foxtrot and the Blues, which are 45 to 60 degrees, the Harris Tango, which is 60 degrees, and the Continental Waltz, which is 90 degrees. The dance axis for many of the forward skating dances 
can range from 45 degrees up to 90 degrees as long as the lobe, as long as the lobe symmetry is maintained. Mathematically, the second half of the lobe starts at the top or high point of the lobe as indicated by the drawing on the screen. Now this is based on the assumption that the number of beats in the first half of the lobe will cover the same amount of floor as a like number of beats in the second half of the lobe. Should this assumption not be true, as in the center lobe of the Blanciaga, the distribution of the number of beats on each half of the lobe must be modified. It is more correct to adhere to the baseline than it is to have the lobe mathematically divided in halves by the number of beats and fail to return to the baseline as indicated by the drawing currently on the screen. A swing is a controlled movement of the free leg from trailing to leading position or vice versa, with both positions matched as to height from the floor, relation to the body, and relation to the employed skate. Debbie will now demonstrate out of forward swings. Notice how controlled the movement of her free leg is. Also notice that the path of her free leg is parallel to the path of her tracing foot. The movement of her free leg does not create or steer the edge. These out of forward swings done incorrectly, notice how her, the path of her free leg crosses the path of her tracing foot. In this case, she is using her free leg to cause the edge to deepen. This is, in is incorrect. On these out of forward team swings, notice how the tracing of both skates remains parallel to one another through the course of the swing. Once again, notice how their, their skates remain parallel to one another as they swing their free leg. During these incorrect team swings, notice how the tracing feet do not remain parallel to one another, but instead they vary. One time they're getting closer together, and the next time they get and they're getting further apart. The next topic will be side B position for a team. There are two types of side B positions: standard and reverse clasping right hands at the lady's right hip. The lady's left arm, left arm is extended across the men's chest, clasping left hands in a location between man's waistline and shoulder line. Notice how their bodies are both square to the tracing during the time they're in this B position. Now done incorrectly, the girl will twist her left shoulder back and that leaves them not in a square position. This is very incorrect, very incorrect. Timing for skate dancing is the harmonious relationship between the team movements in executing the correct fundamentals of skating and the specified requirements of the dance to support the musical accompaniment. As a primary fundamental harmonious relationship would require that the proper steps are skated on the proper count and are sustained for the proper number of beats. Timing is of paramount importance. It is the single most important factor in the dance. 
to be out of phrase with the music, for example, to skate a step on beats three, four, one, two, when it is listed as one, one, two, three, four, is an error. However, it is not as bad as being out of time with the music, but it is not as good as being in phrase. In dance skating, the pattern is a prescribed relationship of the steps of a dance to a dance baseline. There are two types of patterns, border, pa border patterns, steps of a dance having a prescribed relationship as above without a prescribed relationship on the floor, or B, a set pattern, steps of a dance having a prescribed relationship as above and with certain steps required to be executed at the corners of the rink. Now the important elements to be considered in the glide wall, glide waltz are the execution of the raised chasses. Now notice how the chasses are placed alongside, the free foot is raised vertically from the floor and then is placed straight down onto the floor. The rockovers between lobes take on great importance in this dance. Now it is also necessary to maintain a constant arc around the, around the corner, particularly on the three beat right in a forward edge. All the takeoffs in this dance are close and parallel and should take the floor in the parallel and position. The next dance will be the City Blues. The important elements to be considered in this dance are the execution of the progressive runs. Notice how each step takes the floor in the parallel and position. Another important factor to be considered is the drop chasse in the center lobe, plus the quick swing followed by the cross progressive, progressive around the corner. Now the next dance is the Carlos Tango. Once again, we have a dance that has many progressive running steps. These certainly should take the floor in the parallel and position. The toe points are also an important element in this dance. The center lobe, the three running, step, three running steps of the center lobe should all be aimed to the center. The barrier lobe should be symmetrical. And since this is a tango, the phrasing to the music is very important. And notice how the corna is in one constant arc. We'd like to review the inside forward edges. These inside forward edges require angular takeoffs, which are takeoffs where the to be employed foot takes the floor on an arc or flat, divergent to the arc or flat being skated. The takeoff is close, is close and angular. The next dance to be skated is the Academy Blues. Now the important elements of the Academy Blues are retaining a constant arc at the end of the first barrier lobe so that there is no twisting entering the center lobe. The takeoff for the fifth step is an angular takeoff. The progressive running, progressive running steps must all be taken the floor in the parallel and position. The execution of the swing 
drop chasse is also an important element in this dance. The next dance is the Blanciaga. Probably the most important thing in the Blanciaga is the angular take angular takeoff that is used entering and exiting from the center lobe. Now during these angular takeoffs, the body must rock prior to the new foot taking the floor. The progressive runs once again take great importance in this dance, as do the cross progressives and cross chasse steps. The angular takeoff on the left inner forward edge and the angular takeoff on this right inner forward edge are major factors in this dance. The next factor to be considered are inner forward swings. Now while Debbie is doing these inner forward swings correctly, correctly, notice how she bends her free leg as it passes through the end position. Her posture baseline remains good and there is absolutely no twisting of her body. And notice how the knee of her free leg bends as it passes her skating foot. It is absolutely necessary that this happen in order to retain a good posture baseline. During the execution of these inner forward team swings, it is absolutely necessary that the tracings of their skating feet during the swings remains constant. There should be no deviation between the parallel, parallel relationship of their feet. The next dance will be the Rhythm Blues. Highlights of this dance are the angular takeoffs that must be executed prior to the beginning of the first swing and prior, prior to the beginning of the second swing. These takeoffs must be angular. Parallel relationships of the skating feet must be retained. Notice how both partners bend their free legs slightly during these inner forward swings. All progressive runs are stroked through the parallel end position with tight cross progressive and cross chasse movements. The next segment will be outer forward cross rolls. These outer forward edges require angular, angular takeoffs with an outside edge immediately being obtained by the proper rock over from the preceding step. There should be no twisting of the torso before the cross front. The free leg only moves up and over to affect the cross. The next dance will be the double cross waltz. The important factors in the double cross waltz are the cross chasses and cross, cross progressive movements. Notice how every cross is very tight with the heel wheels of one foot being alongside the toe wheels of the other foot. During the double cross movement, it is absolutely necessary that the same arc, same arc be retained. There should be no change of lean during this movement. 
The axis of the center lobe may be skated as deep as you would like, provided that the lobe symmetry is maintained. The next dance will be the Casino Tango. The important parts of the dance are a definite change of edge, right out of inner forward swing, during which time the body remains square to your tracing. The running steps, once again, must be stroked through the parallel end position with tight cross, tight cross front, tight cross back movements, during which time the constant arc is not disturbed. Once again, the center lobe may be varied as long as the lobe symmetry is retained. The next dance will be the skater's march. The factors to be considered during the skater's march are the progressive runs being stroked through the parallel land position, the cross progressive and cross chasse movements of the center lobe must be crossed tightly with the continuous arc being retained during, the, the, during the, their movements. The right out of forward swing must be aimed down rank with a parallel relationship being retained between the tracing skates of both partners. In the skaters march, the phrasing to the music takes on importance. The swing must be executed on counts one, two, three, four, not three, four, one, four, one, two. The next dance will be the Tara Tango. Important elements to be considered in the Tara Tango are the tight cross front swing, cross front movement of the center lobe. During these steps, the arc must be constant. There should be no deviation of it during any of these steps. The toe point movements also take on importance in this dance. Once again, the progressive running steps must all take the floor in the parallel and position. There should be no crossing of running steps during this dance. A slide. By definition, a slide is a step wherein the free foot, all four wheels, is kept on the surface and moved to a leading position. The important elements of a slide are that eight wheels remain on the floor, the free foot moves to the front, the tracing foot stays directly beneath the body, it does not move backward. You must not cross the second slide. This is usually caused by the left foot crossing behind the right foot rather than the right foot crossing in front of the left foot. Some of the common errors done in incorrect slides are first, the fact that a split movement, not a slide movement is used. That's where the right foot goes to the front and the left foot goes to the back. Another severe error is the fact that there is no outer edge on the left foot. The lack of an outer edge on the left 
Bridge on the left foot is what causes the second slide to cross in front. A third error during slides is the fact that the toe wheels are lifted off the floor during the movement. All eight wheels are required to be on the floor. The next dance will be the Next dance will be the Denver Shuffle. The execution of the slide movement is the major part of this dance. It must be done with eight wheels on the floor, a slide, not a split movement, and there should be no crossing of the feet during the slides. The center lobe, which is made up of a cross front, cross behind movement, must have, a, must have a constant arc during the full duration of that center lobe. The barrier lobe must remain symmetrical. During the swing, the tracings of the skaters should remain parallel to one another. The musical count for this dance is one, two, one, Two, one, two, two. A curtsy is a two foot movement wherein the two front wheels of the trailing skate are touched to the floor directly behind and tracking the heel of the leading skate. Done correctly, the curtsy is placed directly, directly behind and held there for one beat of music prior to being lifted off the floor. The most common error in a curtsy is that the two front wheels of the trailing skate are touched to the floor and immediately raised from the floor. The next dance is the master's polka. Since this is the only dance with a curtsy movement in it, it takes on added importance. The important elements are the running steps, the change of edge, plus the curtsy in the center lobe. Around the barrier lobe, the aiming of the right out of forward swing is very important. It must be aimed so that a center lobe exists as is demonstrated by John and Deb right there. In the center lobe, the curtsy must remain on the floor for one full beat of music. A change of edge is a change of curve from outside to inside or, vi or vice versa on one foot without a change of direction of the skate. The next dance is the progressive tango. Entering and exiting from the center lobe are changes of edge. These changes must occur on the baseline with a corresponding change of lean with the body. The body should not be, tw not be twisted to accomplish this change of edge. The toe points must be directly in front and directly behind on the correct beat of music. Rise and fall of the skating knee creates the toe point. Progressive running steps must all take the floor in the parallel end position with close, tight, cross front movements. Movements. The next topic will be the execution of outside backward edges. During the execution of outside backward edges skated correctly, it is absolutely imperative that the free side of your body be brought around so that you are square to your tracing. 
At no time does her skate come around the arc without her body without her body following in a square to the tracing relationship. Outside back edges skated incorrectly usually exhibit an exaggerated twisting of the free side. Notice how Debbie is twisting her body to accomplish these edges. Notice particularly how her free hip twists around as she pushes. Skating in this manner indicates a complete lack complete lack of basic backward skating skills and must be severely penalized. As was previously mentioned, a posture baseline is an imaginary line from the center of the skating foot through the hip line and shoulder line. While John is skating, Notice how his entire body is leaning to both, si to both sides as one unit. To evidence this posture baseline, we will now freeze the frame and superimpose a real posture baseline over John's body. The same true lean can be viewed from the rear. Now, notice how John's body is leaning left and right, not as one unit. Particularly notice how his hip is sticking out. When we, super, when we superimpose a posture baseline, it certainly does not go from the center of the skate through the hip line and shoulder line. This is a most serious error. The next topic to be discussed will be the takeoffs for some open mohawk turns. The forward to backward variety of an open two foot turn must be executed with, with the second step of the turn being placed heel to heel with the first step. The skates must be on a single tracing with the heels touching at the moment the second step begins. The backward to forward variety of this open two foot turn must begin with the free skate starting first with a progressive motion from behind the, tra behind the tracing skate and then secondly taking the floor in an approximate heel to heel position. The next turn will be a right in a forward to left in a back open held mohawk turn done correctly. During this turn, notice how the shoulders of the skater are absolutely level. The turn is finished in an open hip position, retaining a good posture baseline. baseline. During this turn, there is no deviation in the arc being skated. A most serious error during the execution of this turn is the dropping of the leading shoulder by the skater. Now notice how John drops his right shoulder severely at the beginning of the turn. Another serious error is that as soon as the skater lifts his right foot off the floor, off the floor, he closes his right hip. Now this hip should remain in an open position as the right foot leaves the floor. Another serious error is the over rotating of the upper part of your body which causes the free leg to cross behind prior to taking the floor. This will create a distortion in the arc being skated. Another serious error is the lack of continuous rotation during the turn which will cause the turn to be jerky and snapped. The next turn to be discussed is an open dropped mohawk turn. The necessary elements for this good turn are the fact that the shoulders must remain level during the, level during the course of the turn. As soon as the turn is made, the right outer back edge takes the floor in the parallel and position on the next beat of music. Once again, he retains an open hip position at the moment of the turn, 
good posture baseline with no deviation in the arc. Now done incorrectly, the same errors are prevalent. That is the dropping of the right shoulder during the turn. This creates an absolutely incorrect turn. Shoulders must be level when this turn is done. The takeoff of the right inner forward edge must be made in the parallel and position, not angularly, which causes you to step outside the circle being skated. This is a blatant error in the execution of this type of a mohawk turn. The twisting of the body prior to stepping out for the mohawk turn must also be avoided with the corresponding crossing of your free leg before the turn. The next mohawk turn to be considered, it will be a right out of back to left out of forward mohawk. During the execution of this turn, once again, it is absolutely obligatory that the shoulders of the skaters remain level. When after having taken the right out of back edge, there is a slow, gradual, continuous, steady rotation with the free leg stroking from behind the right skate onto a left out of forward edge. The takeoff must be from behind the right skate. Done incorrectly, the most common error is the dropping of the right shoulder prior to stepping forward. Notice how the dropping of the shoulder causes a large cusp, which in turn causes the arc that we're skating on to deviate. The next thing to be discussed is the A position when skating with a partner. Now, A position is a closed relationship, face to face, of the partners, wherein one partner progresses in a backward direction, while the other partner progresses in a forward direction. The important elements to be considered are that the bodies must face each other. They must be square to one another. A critical element in this position is that the front of each partner's body must face the front of the other partner's body. Now notice how during these turns, the girl is not really retaining a parallel relationship of her body to the boys when she steps out to do her turn. This is the most serious error that can be in this position. When skating in the reverse direction, the boy is the one who becomes very susceptible to not having the front of his body remain parallel to the front of the girl's body as he steps onto his left inner forward edge. Rotation is a circular motion of the torso in a horizontal plane. Implicit in this definition is that the rotation must be continuous and constant. Concentric rotation is the rotation of partners at the same time around the same team posture baseline. Rotation of partners at the same time on the same arc. A good example of this is the continuous barrier lobe of the chase waltz. These are steps numbered four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Step four is executed in a tracking relationship. Step five is executed in a tracking relationship. Step six begins in a tracking relationship. Immediately thereafter, the rotating process begins constantly and continuously. Step seven is executed in a non-tracking relationship. Step eight is executed in a non-tracking relationship. Step nine is the same as step six begins in a tracking relationship, immediately thereafter, 
the rotating process begins constantly and continuously. Step 10 is executed in a non-tracking relationship. Step 11 is executed in a non-tracking relationship. Step 12 is the same as step six. It begins in a tracking relationship and immediately thereafter, the rotating process begins constantly and continuously. Step 13 is executed in a non-tracking relationship. Step 14 is executed in a non-tracking relationship. Step 15 is executed in a tracking relationship. During these back to forward turns, steps six, nine, and 12, the backward skating member of the team will deviate into the circle as much as necessary to allow the forward skating member to move up but also as little as possible. The parallel relationship between their bodies must be maintained. The corner of the chase waltz is the prime example of the execution of this type of mohawk turn with a partner. Now, during these steps, notice the parallel relationships of their bodies. The front of the girl's body should continuously face the front of the boy's body. When the boy does his turn, the front of his body should continuously face and be parallel to the front of the girl's body. The rotation involved is constant and continuous. There is no stop, rotate, stop, rotate. The rotation is constant and continuous. Now, there should be an immediate starting to rotate on steps six, nine, and steps 12. This would prevent any type of interruption in the continuity of movement. During all these turns, the shoulders are level. There is no dropping of the right shoulder while we're doing this turn. The partner who turns back to forward deviates from the arc as little as possible, but as much as necessary to allow the other partner to proceed straight through, retaining a constant arc. There should be no deviation in the arc that's being skated. Some of the more common errors during these turns are the partner not remaining parallel or square to the person with whom he or she is skating. Now notice how the girl right now does not remain square to the boy. The front of both partners should be facing each 